Turns out the guy leading the sham investigation into Joe Biden just got exactly what he deserves. I'm going to explain exactly how, but first some quick background. The Republican chair of the Oversight Committee, James Comer, has alleged that Biden's engaged in, quote, shady business practices related to a $200,000 loan repayment from James Biden to his brother Joe Biden back in 2018, when Joe Biden was neither in office nor a candidate for office. And yet still that hasn't stopped Comer from using that completely unsubstantiated allegation as a predicate to proceed with an impeachment inquiry against Joe Biden. So now you're caught up. Here is the amazing part. It turns out, according to a new report from the Daily Beast, that James Comer and his own brother are also engaged in some deals, with one quite literally involving a $200,000 payment. From the Daily Beast, according to Kentucky property records, Comer and his own brother have engaged in land swaps related to their family farming business. In one deal, also involving $200,000 as well as a shell company, the more powerful and influential Comer channeled extra money to his brother seemingly from nothing. Other recent land swaps were quickly followed with new applications for special tax breaks, state records show. All of this, perplexingly, relates to the dealings of a family company that appears to have never existed on paper. In other words, James Comer believes that completely unsubstantiated claims of shady business practices owed to a $200,000 loan repayment between the Biden brothers are grounds for the president's impeachment, and Comer didn't bother to consider the fact that he himself has made a $200,000 payment to his own brother? If he had any less self-awareness, he'd probably get scared by his own reflection. Now, I do have to note that the report has not been independently confirmed by MSNBC nor NBC News, and Comer didn't respond to the Daily Beast request for comment. But right off the bat, I want to be clear about something else. This is not whataboutism, because as far as Joe Biden is concerned, there is no evidence of wrongdoing. Remember, Republicans have for months failed to conjure up a single piece of evidence proving that Biden did anything wrong. Comer and his lackeys are doing their level best to try and cast doubt on Biden's loan repayments, but thus far, it's amounted to nothing. And by the way, if you don't want to take my word for it, consider the fact that even the conservative Washington Examiner supports Biden's claim that the check was a loan repayment. Quote, the records obtained by the Washington Examiner support the White House's claim that the checks James Biden wrote to Joe Biden in 2017 and 2018, respectively, appear to be intended to pay back loans. And while we're on the topic of conservatives pouring cold water on these smoking guns by Republicans, here's one that was certain to leave a mark. This was Jonathan Turley, the Republicans' own witness during their first and only impeachment inquiry hearing. This is a question of an impeachment inquiry. It is not a vote on articles of impeachment. In fact, I do not believe that the current evidence would support articles of impeachment. That is something that an inquiry has to establish. When even Jonathan Turley, who even defended Trump during his impeachment, comes out and says that Republicans have presented no evidence for this whole sham process, you know that James Comer and the rest of the GOP have truly lost the plot. But going back to Comer's own troubles, notice how when he was hamming up his investigation into Biden, the Republican Oversight Committee account tweeted this video with the caption, breaking, today James Comer signed subpoenas for Hunter Biden, James Biden, and Rob Walker. And so now, in light of the Comer news, Democratic Congressman Jared Moskowitz took to his own Twitter, posting, breaking, today Representative Moskowitz signed subpoenas for James Comer. It has been reported that Comer also loaned his brother $200,000. We fully expect James to comply, just like the Trumps. And of course, Moskowitz didn't actually sign a subpoena, but he did do a pretty good job of putting on full display the glaring hypocrisy that's at play here. And let's be clear, Comer himself wasn't the only one drumming up this farcical story. Let me draw your attention to this reaction from some Fox News hosts who were quite concerned about Joe Biden's quote-unquote scandal. Is that your smoking gun? Is that your smoking gun, Jessica? Because you said that was a smoking gun. If money went from overseas directly into Joe Biden's bank account. If a check comes out at some point from that avenue... Is that a smoking gun? I was promised a smoking gun, and if I deliver a smoking gun, you have to admit that gun is smoking. Prove to me it was a loan. I want to see the loan document. I want to know what the interest was. I want to know the payment schedule. I want to know what would happen what would, if there were a penalty. Is there a prepayment penalty? And if they were that concerned about a loan being repaid to Biden, then surely they'll be sounding the alarms about this. Surely this will warrant at least several segments on Fox. 
unless, of course, they aren't really concerned about loan repayments and they're just partisan hacks. But that couldn't possibly be the case, now could it? And look, of course Judge Jeanine or Jesse Waters or anyone on Fox or even within the Republican Party won't sound the alarm about James Comer because at the end of the day, it's not really about the legitimacy of any loans, it is about the narrative. Republicans' goal here is to manipulate their own supporters into thinking that Joe Biden has done something wrong. And so they'll introduce tenuous claims knowing full well that the inevitable fact checks and debunkings won't ever make their way into the conservative media ecosystem. It is an entire ecosystem predicated on tricking the very people who trust them. Although, for a party led by a professional snake oil salesman, I guess we really shouldn't be surprised. So they may continue this sham impeachment inquiry process, if only because they have no shame, because otherwise, the embarrassment might actually be enough to make them rethink their actions. Although maybe, instead of cooking up bogus crimes to attack Joe Biden for, they might consider actually bothering to govern. Because if these recent election results in Kentucky and Ohio and Pennsylvania and Virginia show us anything, it's that Americans aren't buying what Republicans are selling. Before you go, to see more content from MSNBC, make sure to subscribe to this channel by clicking the link right here on this screen. You can also follow the link to see some exclusive content only on Instagram. And finally, to keep watching our videos here on YouTube, click where it says watch more.